Hi, I'm Terry Misashi in the Finishing Shop. Today we're going to tackle a job that most people find somewhat unpleasant, and that would be stripping paint off of a piece of furniture. Now this table is a really nice mahogany uh, dining room table, and someone has painted it very heavily with what I consider to be a pretty darn ugly paint. So we're going to bring this back to its uh, former beauty and we're going to be using a paint stripper. If you thought that maybe you could attack this table with sandpaper, don't do it. You will create so much damage by trying to sand the paint off. You'll go through the paint and possibly into the wood and it'll create more damage. So we're going to chemically remove this paint and then we're going to sand lightly before finishing. This is the thick stripper that you're going to be using. It's, it's a semi-paste and it's good because it stays wet and thick for a longer period of time because that's what you need when you want to get that paint softened so that you can actually push it off. Make sure it's a heavy application and then the next thing you need is patience. You want to make sure that the chemical does the work. Don't be immediately scraping it off. Let it sit, let it soften, let it do the work. So let's get to work. Apply the thick paste on a workable sized area. Don't let the remover dry. Recoat as necessary. Use the putty knife to push the softened paint off. You know it is ready when it comes right off with no effort. Use a maroon pad with fresh remover to scrub off the white residue. Then dry off with a rag to check your progress. Do the rest of the table in the same way. Now we're ready to strip the base. Uh, these are going to be a lot more time consuming and a lot more difficult to get the paint out of the grooves and then you've got the turn column. So be prepared for a little bit more time on these two pedestals. Also too, while we're stripping, somebody painted these gold. Uh, these need to be stripped off too, because these are probably brass. Once again, we're going to be using the thick stripper because the paint needs to soften and take time. Make sure you wear gloves, and with the additional exposure of this chemical, you really do need to use a respirator, as well as getting the air moving in your workspace. Get a fan and have it pulling the air away from you so that you don't get all of this toxic fumes from this product. It is very corrosive and very dangerous. Coat the entire pedestal with a thick application of the remover. Start to push off the layers of paint with the putty knife. Use a brass bristle brush to scrub the paint out of the grooves and crevices. Take sawdust and sprinkle it on the deep turned areas and whisk the remover and sawdust off with a whisk broom. The bristles dig deep getting the paint out. Okay, we have all the heavy paint removed from here. You can still see there's some white haze and residue left of the original white paint. We're going to switch removers from the heavy paste. We're going into a very liquidy, watery pa uh, remover. And we're just going to wash it because it will rapidly take down all of that residue. You can also use lacquer thinner, but this remover will do a very fast job of, can even swab it. And that brings the wood up nice and clean and gets it ready for sanding. If you have any paint left in the grooves, make sure you use your brass brush. That's going to take care of all that 
tiny little white paint that doesn't look like much now, but after you finish your table, it's going to stare at you. So let's uh, leave this to dry, and then it will be sanded. The Random Orbit Sander with 180 will sand the flats of the legs well. Be careful not to bump into the pedestal area with the spinning disc. Use the micro zip to sand the round area of the lower pedestal. A flexible sponge runs up the curve of the leg perfectly. Quarter a sheet of sandpaper, fold, and hand sand the smooth part of the upper pedestal. Use a maroon pad to clean and smooth the deep coves of the rest of the pedestal. Tack off the pedestal and apply the mahogany wiping stain. Allow to dry. We are finishing the top of this table by spray, so I want the base to have the same look of a sprayed finish. This can be done with aerosols. Tack off and use an aerosol sealer outside. Light multiple coats and a can handle makes the job easy. Apply the aerosol top coat in the same manner. The table is all stripped and it came out super. All that white paint really, really did come off. We have some residue here and that'll just be sanded off. And so the next job is to sand this with first the random orbit sander and then we'll be using the block to be doing the edges. We do have to be careful, this is a veneer top. So I'm gonna be sanding with 180 only. I don't wanna burn through this veneer. So once we get this sanded, we got a few holes to patch and then we'll get it stained. Carefully sand by moving the random orbit over the entire top without heavy pressure or tipping. Do not roll the sander off the edge. Hand sand the edges with the finish block and 180 grit. Folded sandpaper will clean up the groove on the skirt. Filling holes is an important next step in preparing for staining this table. The, now that the table's been sanded, you can see more easily some of the holes. So here's one here. There's a really bad one here on the edge. So we're going to go through the two fillers that you're going to need to get this table smooth and ready to stain. Now this is a hardware store variety filler and you need to stir it up, make sure the colorant in there is good and mixed in. And this is perfectly fine for a little hole in the interior of the surface of this table. However, when you talk about an edge like this that's going to get a lot of wear and tear, this filler would never be strong enough. And this is full of old dirt and paint and whatnot, so we're actually going to carve it out a little bit. We're going to actually pull some of this old wood off of here and create a new fresh hole so that the filler will actually stick. Otherwise, it'll just pop right out. And the filler itself is going to be an auto body filler, otherwise known as a polyester. And it has a little tube of hardener that goes with it. And we're gonna take a little piece of sandpaper and use that as our mixing palette. Don't need very much. We'll just take a small amount out and the trick here is to make sure you don't really use a pile of hardener. Really, that's as much as you need. More hardener does not mean harder. That actually messes up the hardening of the putty. So mix it thoroughly. Get that hardener put in and you got to move along pretty quick because this stuff hardens up rather rapidly. Once you feel like it's well mixed, go ahead and put that in the hole. Try not to get too messy around the surrounding area. Get that filled so it's nice and overfilled. Walk away. Takes about 20 minutes for it to harden and then we'll come back and sand it and then we'll do some staining. Sand the cured filler with the finishing block and 180. It shears off the pile of dried filler perfectly. Stain the table by working quickly to spread the stain. Work from one edge to the other, not stopping in the middle, to avoid lap marks. 
Wipe all of the excess off. Okay, the table is all stained. I'm going to let it dry for four or five hours. Next step is we're actually going to transport this to a spray room and have a professional top coat this for us. They'll put a sealer on it and then a top coat and it will be a heck of a lot easier than trying to do a hand applied finish on such a big surface. The professional that is spraying this table is me. The sealer is applied smoothly and quickly. When dry it is scuffed with 320, tacked off, and then the top coat is applied. The top coat gets scuffed with 320, tacked off, and a second coat is applied. The finish is thoroughly dry, and now we're ready to do the last part of the process, which is called rubbing out. Rubbing out means that any little tiny dust bumps and little nits that you can feel can be taken away. So now we're going to use either a ultra-fine non-woven abrasive or we can use the 4-aught steel wool. My preference is the non-woven. It's not as messy and it's not flammable. Our lubricant is going to be paste wax. You don't ever rub out a finish dry. It's too aggressive. So we're going to put some paste wax on this pad just take some right out of the can and we're going to smooth the surface with some firm pressure not, not too crazy go with the grain as best you can take a clean cloth buff the wax off and you're done this process is really good for satin finishes. Wow, feel that. That is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So that's how would you would do the rest of the two bases. Now when it comes to a surface, that's a little different. This is a very big, broad surface. And rather than using just a pad, you're going to put the pad on the finishing block and you're going to put some wax on this pad, dig some out, get some on there, firm pressure absolutely with the grain, go with the grain, do not deviate, nice long straight strokes Keep in mind that you don't ever want to run out of wax on your pad. If you do, stop and reload. Now let's just buff this down and see how we're doing. This is going to change the sheen of the surface a little bit. Before, when it was just the finish, it was kind of brassy. This creates a nice, soft glow to the surface. You can see the difference between where I've rubbed out and where I haven't. And so this is feeling very nice. It's gotten rid of all the dust bumps, and it's given me more of a pleasant surface. Congratulations, you've just learned how to do a simple rub out. The table is done and now I can enjoy the fruits of my labor. Every time I look at this table I'm just going to smile because it came out so beautiful. It was well worth slogging your way through all that white paint. So, bon appetit.